Man is born with an insatiable desire to comprehend the origin of life and the universe. 150 years ago, one man thought he had figured it out and wrote a book that has shaped the way we look at our world. That man was Charles Darwin. But what if he was wrong? side of the Santa Cruz River Valley, we're at a very special location. This is the place where a young man, 25 years old, walked up this slope 175 years ago. On April 26, 1834, Charles Darwin walked up this slope and made some significant statements that were to impact the world. He saw the river, and he saw the pebbles and sand being moved by the river. Then he walked over the boulders and cobbles that line the bank of the river, up this talistrun slope to the top of this basalt cliff. And as he looked out, he saw the spillover deposit, the, the cobbles and boulders that uh, were on top of this cliff. And he saw a 15-foot diameter boulder and he described it as from the core of the Andes Mountains sitting on top of this basalt cliff. He looked across at the boulder bar that's three miles wide and five miles long blocking the path of the river. And he saw the whole terrain here and he interpreted it in terms of the slow and gradual action of the present Santa Cruz River. He wrote about it in his journal. He said, the river, though it has so little power in transporting even inconsiderable fragments, yet in the lapse of ages might produce by its gradual erosion and effects of which it's difficult to judge the amount. And he went on to interpret this whole valley in terms of the slow and gradual action of the present Santa Cruz River. All around me I can see the valley and I'm here on this slope that's strewn with rounded rocks called cobbles and uh, larger rocks called boulders. And uh, this boulder and cobble strewn slope calls my attention to the power of moving water. Because these cobbles and boulders did not form here, they were ripped loose from somewhere else and they've been uh, transported, rounded, and piled up here to form this slope and the ridge behind me. Some of these rocks came from as much as five miles upstream on the basalt cliffs and slopes. And here they sit, here in this cobble and boulder deposit. What is this cobble and boulder deposit? It has the appearance of being a giant boulder bar. This landform behind me is 200 feet high. And it's three miles wide across the valley and five miles long down the valley. This landform is a giant bar formed by a colossal flood. The water was moving at freeway speed, dragging boulders and cobbles into this slope, and actually rolling and bouncing rocks up this slope to form this enormous ridge. Only a catastrophic flood, 400 feet deep, could have washed rock fragments like this into this location. I'm here north of the Santa Cruz River on top of the basalt cliffs. At this location, my GPS tells me that I'm 300 feet above the level of the river. Yet at this location, we see cobbles and boulders strewn over the basalt cliffs. Charles Darwin 
even described a 15-foot diameter metamorphic rock from the core of the Andes Mountains. Darwin assumed that the 15-foot diameter rock was floated in on an iceberg and dropped here. How did these rock fragments get here? Some of these rock fragments are metamorphic rock from the core of the Andes Mountains, over 150 miles away. How did these rocks get on top of this cliff? Only a catastrophic flood, a colossal flood 400 feet deep over the cliffs could have washed rock fragments like this into this location. This is a giant spillover deposit from the colossal flood. The Santa Cruz River Valley is positioned between this high gravel covered plateau that I'm standing on and the lava flood terrain to the north of us. This river valley runs east-west from the Andes Mountains to the Atlantic Ocean, a distance of 200 miles. Two things are really important about looking at this valley. The first thing to see about the Santa Cruz River Valley is the width of the valley, six miles compared to the small width of the river. This valley is much larger than the present river system requires. And I see the small and minor power of the present Santa Cruz River moving sand and pebbles. Yet I see the gravel and the boulders and, and big cobbles that have been moved uh, in the past. I see the depositional features of large boulder uh, ridges and mounds and bars that are extraordinary features of the valley. And so these depositional features within the valley command my attention. And as I think about the the present river and the width of the canyon and the um, amazing uh, boulder and gravel deposits of the valley, I think of a big flood that was once through here. An enormous river flood once excavated this valley. So the Santa Cruz River Valley is a testimony of a gigantic river flood. And behind me you can see this lake which uh, many years ago uh, was about 50 feet higher and of course it's drained uh, rapidly uh, during one of these uh, glacier outburst floods. And so uh, being here at Marina Glacier reminds us of the uh, colossal ice age dams that must have existed in these valleys when rapid catastrophic breaching of dams failed and we had these glacier outburst floods down on the Santa Cruz River. So the, the source of big, really big glacier outburst floods is right here in the, the upper drainage of the Santa Cruz River in southern Argentina. Why did Charles Darwin blunder here in his interpretation of the Santa Cruz River Valley? I think there are three reasons why he failed to understand this terrain properly. The first reason was his view of what he was going to see was tainted by presuppositions. Before he even came here, he had some strong ideas and opinions about what he was going to see. And because of that, he did not see this place correctly. A second reason that Darwin aired here at the Valley was he was reading the wrong book. He had a copy of Charles Lyell's book, The Principles of Geology, on the Beagle, and as he came to this valley, he was thinking the thoughts of Charles Lyell, of slow and gradual river erosion cutting valleys. And because of that, it caused a significant error. And a third reason that Darwin aired here at the cliff was he was developing an incorrect methodology, a pseudoscience, if you will, an incorrect way of looking at the world. Darwin's methodology was flawed and we see it in microcosm right here at the basalt cliffs. Darwin was wrong about the Santa Cruz River. He was wrong about the process that formed this valley. What else was Darwin wrong about? <laughs>